Definitely in Central Texas now. Hill Country in Texas is beautiful. The way that the land rises and falls is totally different and it's really wonderful. I love it. There's plateaus and there's cliffs and there's beautiful green rolling pastures and it's just a really lovely part of Texas to drive through. through a lot of little towns every time I come to a stop sign I, I actually had to adjust my directions a few times so I had to fiddle with my phone and whenever I did it was like a magnet like I just wanted to go check CNN or I wanted to check Twitter why does it matter why can't I wait two or three days why would that affect what I do right now so I don't know I just I'm realizing man I did not know how addicted to this constant news cycle I am, but I clearly am. I'm out in Central Texas right now, and it is clearly Trump country. I have seen not one Biden sign, and I have seen a ton of huge Trump signs, and I just passed a Trump store. It literally, the name of the store was Trump Store. And it just had t-shirts and banners and bumper stickers and anything you could want, hats. <laughs> it was pretty, uh, I don't know, I guess I just, there's a polarization in America. I don't know if you've heard the old story about the reporter who literally was in shock that Nixon had won. And remarked to a friend, Nixon won? How could Nixon win? I don't know anyone that voted for him. That person lived in such a bubble that they literally didn't know anyone who believed differently from them. And I think that's one danger is that we don't, that the two sides don't even interact. And so we have no recognition that there is an other. But I think a secondary danger is happening right now which is when people get so politically correct that they're not willing to speak up about what they know to be true. I have someone I really love that is very liberal and less than 10 years ago was saying that they absolutely would not use transgender pronouns. And now that sentiment is relegated to being hateful, Anyway, I say that to say that the, the increasing political correctness of America is harming us, y'all. It's not good. And it's dividing us and it's making it so that only people who live way out in the country are willing to put up a sign that says, I support Trump, even though the last election proved that there are a lot of silent Trump voters that are not willing to say, I am voting for Trump but are voting for Trump. It's an interesting phenomenon, politically speaking. I'm coming up to where Enchanted Rock is. I can see it just barely peeking over the top. I've passed so much roadkill and seen so many vultures and I was just thinking about the way that rural life confronts you with death in the way that city life just often doesn't do. There's a reality and grit to life out in the country with animals that things die and there are predators and there are prey and there's tragedy and there's all of that. Cost, the cost of life. I'm not sure that shows up in City life. God has made more things than our minds can fathom and we get so wrapped up in our own world and our news cycle, I do, and our fears and our 
personal concerns, and I'm not saying those things aren't important, but it is really helpful to get some breathing room up a little higher and away from my perspective. just got here to the cabin. It's a pretty amazing place. I'm gonna unload the car. express how thankful I am to the Lord for providing this time and space and place for me to get away and do this. myself to. Aside from this, I'll have to upload videos and occasionally text Doug. So that's the plan. And I'm going to start now by, I think I'm just going to jump in to, I think, Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him so that he might show his servants what must very soon take place. Wow. I just read chapters one through four of Revelation. I took like four pages of notes and that was just the most essential stuff. The thing I'm most struck by is the descriptions of Jesus. It says in chapter one, it calls him him who loves us and has set us free from our sins through his own blood. John identifies himself as our brother and companion in, and this is what he calls it, the distress, the kingdom, and the faithful endurance to which Jesus calls us. And I was just struck by that I do not think of Christianity with those, I'm, I might use the middle one, the kingdom, but we don't often say, you're my brother and companion in the distress. You're my brother in the faithful endurance. We don't talk like that or think like that, but that is what Christianity is. It's the distress and the faithful endurance to which Jesus calls us. So this is what we're called to is distress, the distress, the kingdom, and the faithful endurance to which Jesus calls us. One of the most difficult challenges I have in relationships is when someone lies to me. It feels like a big blow, and it makes me wonder if I can ever trust them again. It feels discouraging, and it, it makes me go back and question what's real. It's just really encouraging that Jesus is called the true we're over and over given a picture of this Jesus that is uh, on the throne and then a different description has him appearance blazing like diamond and topaz 
there's all these different descriptions disciplining and he is loving and he is calling us to be faithful and it's just such a good first few chapters of revelation and what god has for us it definitely helps me set my eyes on eternity and not on the news or even my own discomfort i'm just going to go sit for a little while i think and enjoy some silence out on the porch and hope that maybe some deer or cows will come down or something else even we'll see I think I count like 40 or 50 frogs just that I can see with my eyes right here. They're all about this big. And they're just dotting the whole shoreline. 